If you have your Bibles, let's look at Mark 5, verse 28. Enjoyed all that music and singing, and Nathan the special. Hallelujah. You know, it's amazing. You're a preacher, and I guess like an artist, he sees all kind of things, and he hears all kind of things, and you hear something, and it just... Man, it has such an impact on you or read something that have such an impact on you. And so you begin to, God begins to speak to you through it. But the title of this message is, Be Careful What You Say to Yourself. <laughs> Be careful what you say to yourself. It can bring victory to your life or it can mess you up. How many of y'all talk to yourself? Everybody in here. It's when you're in trouble is when you begin to answer yourself. <laughs> I've done that a few times. But look at somebody and say, be careful what you say to yourself. Look at Mark 5, 28. This one scripture right here. For she said, this is a woman with the issue of blood. I, I, I preached on that Wednesday night. For she said, who did she say it to? She said it to herself. For she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. She was a blessing to her own cause. <laughs> she had a need for healing and she was a blessing to her own cause. Because she said, if, for she said, if I may touch but his clothes. She said it to herself. She didn't say that to anybody else. She said that to herself. She said to herself she knew she could have it. Now, you know, a lot of times we people talk themselves out of God's purpose in their life. People talk themselves out of the work that God's doing in their life. They talk themselves out of healings, out of deliverances, out of all kind of things. This can be a blessing or this can be a curse. You can... You can speak a blessing over something that you need, that you desire, or you can speak a curse. In your heart, you can see that it can happen. Or in your mind, you can see that maybe it ain't going to happen or it can't happen. And you begin to agree with your feelings and your fears. Be careful what you say to yourself. I like to encourage myself. I read in the Bible, this is where I got this. David encouraged himself in the Lord. Sometimes you can't find any encouragement from people. Even people that love you. Sometimes you can't find it. Sometimes... And what you want to do, you want to go to the Word of God to see what the Word of God says about you. Says, well, you want to encourage yourself about with what the Lord said. You want to say it to yourself. Paul said that. I can do all things <laughs> through Christ, which strengtheneth me. It's important what we say to ourselves. I'm going to show you some other scriptures. It's important. Some of us have been talking ourselves out of what God's got for us because of your situation, because the enemy is coming against you. <laughs> Ronnie, ain't that right? Ronnie, he's grinning, he knows. You know what Joy told me? I tell you this thing. She told me this week, I, I talked to her and she said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drive my wheelchair up to the auditorium, but said, Bible Center, but I ain't going to need it when I go home. She's been talking to herself. See, you can talk to God, but you need to talk to yourself too. How many know you've got to talk to God and then talk to yourself? This woman heard something good that Jesus was coming by. So she made up her mind, if I can touch but the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. Now, how many raise their hand and say, well, you know, I really, I talk to myself. You do. You might not speak it out, but you do. 
Be careful what you say to yourself. Some people say, well, my, my children, my grandchildren, they're going to hell. No, they ain't. You don't need to talk to yourself like that. Come on now. It, may, it don't matter what it looks like. God can turn it around. We need to be careful what we say about ourselves. Look at, uh, you know, I got a little note here. Many people talk themselves out of victory. What we say to ourselves is important. Some of you say, well, I don't guess I'm going to get over this. <laughs> Come on now. I just don't guess I'm going to get over this. Yeah, I'm going to get over it. Jesus is going to get me out of this. Jesus is going to get me completely out of this. Look at Luke 15, 17. I got so much stuff to preach, it is unbelievable. I got messages over there. I'm getting messages, and I'm talking about good messages. I'm, I'm, talking, about, I, I, I'm talking about good messages. I ain't, got, I ain't got the places to preach them. But I'm trying to obey God for what he wants me to talk about at the time he wants me to talk about it. Now, I want you to look at Luke 15, 17. This is the prodigal son. He wanted everything right now. And he wanted to get his inheritance and leave his father. And he went in a foreign country. And he wasted everything. How many know that's a great picture of what happens to people? He wasted it all. And he wound up with nothing. But then he began to talk to himself. How do I feel the anointing? See, a lot of times we hear all these voices from the outside, the enemy trying to put fear on us and trying to put unbelief on us and trying to put defeat on us. And we listen to that voice instead of listening to the voice, the inner voice that is connected to God. <laughs> and we need to begin to talk about deliverance and victory. We begin to, we've been talking to God, let's talk to ourselves. Oh Lord, I, <laughs> amen. Does God want us to talk to ourselves? Yeah. Look at this. This man come to himself. Does God love people? Oh, Lord. <laughs> Ronnie, I can't. You know, if I found out one thing in ministry, if I've never found out anything else, I have a revelation of how much God loves people. Maybe not a full dose of it because it's so big. But I've learned that God loves people. All he wants is their, is their heart, their affection, their, their surrender, their life. He has a great purpose for them. The reason so many people are tormented and the reason you see young people committing suicide is because they have this driving force in them, this purpose and they and it gets sidetracked and they aim it in the wrong direction and they don't know how to deal with the emotions that they're having it all they'd have to do is say jesus here i am i'm a mess i i don't know anything i don't have anything i don't understand anything but here i am i belong to you you take my life god what he does how magnificent three people on drugs from Canada and uh, Kurt the big six foot five three hundred pound guy that works with Benny said he saw him in an escalator in a store and he knew they were drug people and he invited them to a Benny Hinn service I think in Ohio and now they're going to Israel with Benny Hinn and then they're going to be missionaries in one of these countries in Europe <laughs> sold their house everything 